tell you that President Biden has narrowed his list of potential Supreme Court nominees to one. He will make a historic nomination to replace Justice Stephen Breyer on the Supreme Court with Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson, currently on the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. The president is expected to make it official in a White House announcement shortly. If she is confirmed by the Senate, Jackson will be the first black woman ever to serve on the Supreme Court. She comes to the precipice of the court from South Florida by way of Harvard and then Harvard again for law school. Uh, it's official. Hello everyone, welcome to this edition of Vowers. We talk about, we talk about, we hope we get her name right, Conjunae, Conjunae Brown Jackson. Yes, Conjunae Brown Jackson has made history on this day today, Friday, February 25th, 2022. Yes, yeah, she has made history in more ways than one after she become the first black woman to be nominated for the U.S. Supreme Court. Yes, by President Joe Biden. We'll get to her story later on in the program. But first thing first, join in the conversation using the hashtag viral he don't connect. And don't forget, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe is care. Tell a friend, call a friend, hit that subscribe button so you won't miss a thing here on Vibes. We talk about Kanaji Brown Jackson. Yes, Kanaji Brown Jackson has made history. What a historic moment today it was. She becomes the first black woman to be nominated in the U.S. Supreme Court. Yes, this is historic in many ways, in many ways and know how. Let's get back. Well, let's get you a little brief story about her background into her journey from being from Harvard to law clerk for the man she's about to replace, Justice Stephen Bry, and to now becoming nominated for that seat in the U.S. Supreme Court. Take a look. She certainly knows her way around the Supreme Court. She was a law clerk for Justice Stephen Breyer. That's the man she's been nominated to succeed. She's now a judge on the federal appeals court here in Washington. And perhaps one of the reasons that motivated the president to choose her is that she was confirmed for that position just eight months ago with the votes of three Senate Republicans. For the previous eight years, she was a federal trial court judge here in Washington. And at her confirmation for that position, she got some support from, of all people, the former Republican House Speaker Paul Ryan, because it turns out that his in-laws and hers are distantly related through marriage. Judge Jackson was born here in Washington, but she grew up in Miami, where her mother was a school administrator and her father was a lawyer for the school board. And she has said that watching him was an early inspiration for her to seek a career in the law. She graduated from both Harvard and Harvard Law, and that's where she met her husband, Patrick. He's now a surgeon here in Washington. They have two daughters, ages 17 and 21. And of course, if confirmed, she'd be the first black woman ever on the Supreme Court and the first justice since Thurgood Marshall, who retired 30 years ago, to have significant experience defending accused criminals because she's a former public defense lawyer here in Washington. And at age 51, she'd be one of the youngest on the current court. She'd be second in age only to Amy Coney Barrett, who turned 50 last month, Chris. Yes, indeed. Brown Jackson has done it all as her wealth of experience in law and justice. Well, we want to look back at the historic moment today that President Biden announced all her credentials and her upbringing with this. Our government, our courts haven't looked like America. And I believe it's time that we have a court that reflects the full talents and greatness of our nation with a nominee of extraordinary qualifications. And that we inspire all young people to believe that they can one day serve their country at the highest level. I've admired these traits of pragmatism, historical perspective, wisdom, character in the jurists nominated by Republican presidents as well as Democratic presidents. And today, I'm pleased to introduce to the American people a candidate who continues in this great tradition. All right, Jeff. Opinions are always carefully reasoned, tethered to precedent and demonstrate respect for how the law impacts everyday people. 
It doesn't mean she puts her thumb on the scale of justice one way or the other, but she understands the broader impact of her decisions. Whether it's cases addressing the rights of workers or government service, she cares about making sure that our democracy works for the American people. She listens. She looks people in the eye, lawyers, defendants, victims, and families. And she strives to ensure that everyone understands why she made a decision, all is, and what it means to them. She strives to be fair, to get it right, to do justice. That's something all of us should remember. And it's something I've thought about throughout this process. No way. President Biden said that she was a good person. She was qualified for the job. Even Brown Jackson made some statements about her journey to get where she at now. Take a look. The extraordinary honor of this nomination. And I am especially grateful for the care that you have taken in discharging your constitutional duty in service of our democracy with all that is going on in the world today. I also offer my sincere thanks to you as well, Madam Vice President, for your invaluable role in this nomination process. I must begin these very brief remarks by thanking God for delivering me to this point in my professional journey. My life has been blessed beyond measure, and I do know that one can only come this far by faith. Among my many blessings, and indeed the very first, is the fact that I was born in this great country. The United States of America is the greatest beacon of hope and democracy the world has ever known. Brown Jackson has done the impossible. Many people would not thought in their lifetime they would see a black woman try to go for the highest of courts in the U.S. Supreme, Supreme Court. It's a high distinction. Many women have done it, but this time around, a black woman is going to be on the bench. And what a historic moment for women, the black community, and all people, all minorities. What a historic moment and stuff. So, we want to hear from you what you people had to say about Kanaji Brown Jackson receiving a historic nomination from President Biden. And let's hear what pundits had to say. Let's hear from people all across the media on what they had to say on this reaction to what the people say. Watching, but was the front runner all along? She was the front runner all along for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, she serves on uh, the U.S. District Court here in Washington, D.C., uh, which is often seen as a stepping stone to the Supreme Court. So many other uh, Supreme Court justices have come from that court, inclu including Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She's a former clerk to the man who she will be replacing on the Supreme Court, Justice Stephen Breyer, who's retiring. She's a former public defender, uh, just like the man who's nominating her, President Biden. Uh, it's something that he's talked about a lot, the fact that it was important to serve in that capacity, perhaps uh, not always as prestigious as being a prosecutor or, and certainly not as lucrative as working in, in corporate law, but so important to be able to give people who can't afford uh, a private defense a good defense because everyone is entitled to a defense under the law and there's a chronic shortage of, of public defenders in this country. So there is sort of uh, something poetic about uh, the firm, for, first former public defender president now naming the first former public defender justice to be a, a nominee to the Supreme Court. Uh, beyond that, you know, she's uh, she's spoken about by uh, many of the people who I've talked to who are uh, in her in her circle, very close friends with her as someone who is is obviously incredibly intelligent, but also really cut out for this role. Someone who th thinks through the issues very carefully. A number of her college classmates told me that she actually taught them how to be better writers back in college. Um, and then, of course, went on from Harvard undergrad to Harvard Law School, went into corporate law for a few years, but decided it wasn't 
wasn't for her. Um, her. Her parents were both public servants, so it wasn't a surprise to anyone that she went into public service as well. Um, and now she has served as a circuit court judge, a district court judge. She served on the U.S. Sentencing Commission. All of those experiences led her to be the front runner uh, basically from the beginning. She is 51 years old, and now she is the president's nominee. Elected Angie Brown Jackson as his nominee to the Supreme Court. He's expected to make that announcement soon. Now, this election sets in motion a historic confirmation process to put the first black woman on the Supreme Court. Here to discuss is CNN senior political correspondent and anchor of Inside Politics Sunday, Abby Phillip, along with CNN chief national affairs correspondent Jeff Zeleny and CNN chief legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin. Jeffrey, uh, to you first, a historic moment, no doubt. The president really had an embarrassment of riches in terms of qualified women that, that he could pick. You said you weren't surprised by this election, though. You know, Judge, Judge Jackson has had sort of Supreme Court stardust sprinkled on her for a long time. When uh, Justice Scalia died and President Obama was in office, even though, <clears throat> even though Judge Jackson was only on the district court, she was interviewed for that vacancy, which ultimately went to Merrick Garland, who did not get a vote in the Senate. But you know, she is at once both very different from previous nominees, but very similar. She is, of course, the first black woman, which, of course, we are talking about. It's extremely significant. She's the, she would be the only justice in a very long time with experience as a criminal defense lawyer. It hasn't been since Thurgood Marshall that anyone with criminal defense experience has been on the court. However, she is also conventionally very qualified. She's a judge on the D.C. Circuit, just like John Roberts, just like Brett Kavanaugh, just like um, Antonin Scalia and Ruth Ginsburg. It is a traditional uh, stopping point on the way to the Supreme Court. Impeccable credentials. Um, Harvard Law School clerk for Stephen Breyer, the justice she will, she will replace if confirmed. So she presents a combination of um, traditional qualifications and something new on the court. And above all, she just was confirmed with a bipartisan vote for the D.C. Circuit last year. So at least on paper, it looks like this should not be a terrifically controversial confirmation process. On paper, but, on but paper, we shall yes, see. This is see. a different Washington today. Abby Phillip, uh, if I can just get your analysis on the significance of this moment. Obviously, we knew that history would be made. The president would be announcing the first black woman to sit on the U.S. Supreme Court. Nonetheless, once it is clear who that is and that it is official, uh, give us your take on what this means for the country. Yeah, I think it's hugely significant, and frankly, it's about time. I think that's going to be the reaction that you hear from a lot of uh, African Americans in this country and, and people of color in this country. It is time for the court to represent more of what this country looks like. And and but I think also to uh, Jeffrey's point, uh, it isn't just that she is a black woman. It is also that her background is more diverse as well. Um, I, I think there might be. Some some people tempted to uh, d describe her as an elitist, but she is someone whose parents were uh, were uh, public were were educators. Uh, she is someone who worked as a public defender, worked on the sentencing commission, and those things actually might be for Republicans disqualifying. You've seen a lot of Republicans on Capitol Hill actually attacking a lot of Biden's nominees for working in the cr in the criminal justice space, but for advocates, uh, her background is. Is a, um, is a myriad of things that give her a different perspective on the court. And that is also why it is significant. Uh, it's not just because of the color of her skin, but because of the, the perspective uh, that she brings to the court as well. The United States Supreme Court, and my constitutional responsibility to replace that justice, I've sought a candidate with the strongest credentials, record, character, and dedication to the rule of law. That's why I'm excited to nominate one of the nation's brightest legal minds, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, to be our next Supreme Court Justice. Raised by public school teachers, she was a standout student who became a clerk for Justice Breyer, the same justice that she will be replacing when confirmed. Justice Breyer gave me the chance to work for him as a law clerk and thereby bear witness to the workings of his brilliant legal mind. Judge Jackson has been confirmed by the United States Senate three times in her career and garnered support from both sides of the aisle each time. My praise for Katanji's intellect, 
for her character, for her integrity, it's unequivocal. What's remarkable is the background she brings to the bench. Judge Jackson has deep experience across the legal system. She served as a federal public defender, a top lawyer in private practice, a member of the U.S. Sentencing Commission, and a federal judge. She's a history maker, the first black woman ever to be nominated to the Supreme Court, an immensely qualified judge who's going to help make our court stronger and more reflective of our country. When you become a judge, you take an oath to look only at the law in deciding your cases, that you set aside your personal views about the circumstances, the defendants, or anything else. I can't wait for you to meet her. I'll have more to say soon. Michelle Childs, who was, of course, the pick of Jim Clyburn down in South Carolina, and Leandra Kruger out there sitting in the California Appeals Court, which is one of the largest courts, if not the largest court in the country. I think it boiled down to a couple factors. One is that she had already been confirmed, and she had three senators who came over to her side during that confirmation um, procedure. And the other thing, you have to look at her age, 51 years of age. Someone once said, the vice presidents, as we celebrated uh, the vice presidency of Kamala Harris, vice presidents sit for four, maybe eight Eight years Supreme Court justices sit for life. Mm -hmm. That may have been the biggest factor is the fact that she will be on this court for a long time, even through this conservative uh, bent that we are seeing right now. So, Dell, let's talk a little bit, not to pivot right away, but here I go, about Michelle Childs and Representative Clyburn, very powerful man who many believe got this president elected and who was very loud in championing Michelle Childs, even had both senators, um, who I believe he, he back-channeled with as well, coming out, Lindsey Graham and uh, Senator Scott, both saying she should be the one. HBCU, a different part of the country, new energy on this court. What does it say, if anything, about the relationship between Clyburn and the president, um, that she's not the pick, or, or doesn't that matter? I think it says that it boiled down to qualifications uh, more than anything else. She does have that experience on the appeals court in D.C., which is the launching pad for most Supreme Court justices. But I also think it indicates that there might have been something in Jay Michelle's, Michelle Child's past that we mm -hmm. didn't know about. Keep in mind that she has yet mm. to be confirmed uh, moving forward, so this would be mm. her first confirmation um, process, and they put that on hold. And with Katanji Brown, you know what you know. Now, there is one thing about Judge Katanji Brown Jackson that may wind up being something that Republicans seize on, which was her statement when Donald Trump wanted to keep his record secret but she was the one that wrote the opinion that said America does not have kings right. and it has one president at a time. Mm -hmm. And this man is not that president. So expect the right to really seize on that. Has chosen a nominee for the Supreme Court. It will be a black woman, as he has promised. What we don't know at this hour is who it will be. A recent CBS News poll asked how important diversity is on the court. And the answer broke down along racial lines. Most black Americans say it's very or at least somewhat important. That is less the case for white Americans. Jan Crawford is outside the Supreme Court for us. Jan, good morning. So we have a choice. We just don't know who. That's right, Tony. President Biden has interviewed his top three contenders, and they are D.C.-based federal appeals court judge Katanji Brown-Jackson, California Supreme Court Justice Leandra Kruger, and South Carolina federal court judge Michelle Childs. Now, Jackson has long been considered the front runner. She was on former President Obama's uh, shortlist uh, back in 2016 for the Supreme Court. She's a Harvard, Harvard Law School honors graduate. She was a law clerk, actually, for Justice Stephen Breyer, the man that uh, she may now replace. But the other two contenders also highly regarded Leander Kruger, uh, the one on the California Supreme Court, and she is just considered this dazzling intellect. She's also a former Supreme Court clerk and argued 12 cases before the justices while she was working in the Obama administration. Judge Childs, on the other hand, she's a favorite of South Carolina Congressman Jim Clyburn, uh, and she stands out as the only non-Ivy Leaguer of the three. Now, President Biden could make his uh, announcement as soon as today, and certainly uh, by Monday, uh, the day before the State of the Union. Adriana? All right. Well, the wait continues, Jan. Thanks so much. Everyone had positive vibes about this nomination from Kanaji Brown Jackson that she knows her, her, her education. She knows everything about law. 
and she's a good fit for the Supreme Court. I didn't know that she was um, nominated before during the Obama years, but now during the Biden years, she gets her chance. She gets her chance of a lifetime. It's going to be a tough hill battle for her um, going through the process to get nominated and be um, confirmed. But I think she's going to get confirmed one way and one how, and you will see the nation's first black female U.S. Supreme Court justice. So congratulations in order to Kanaji Brown Jackson. So thank you, everyone out there, for watching Viral this week. So for me being Kendra Dick saying so long, we'll see you next time for another edition of Viral.